Myanmar is opening its borders and starting its move towards democracy. The number of visiting tourists has seen a rapid increase. In this video, I will show you what you can typically expect to cover in a one-week trip to the country. I will take you on a temple safari around Bagan. I will show you the busy life on and around in the lake. And I'll show you a few sites in the capital of Yangon. At the end, I'll also show you briefly where I stayed during my trip. Myanmar has a well-functioning air network frequenting the largest cities in the country, and a 70 minutes flight northwest from Yangon will take you to its most popular tourist destination, which is Bagan. Bagan is a 67 square kilometer large plain, scattered with over 3,000 Buddhist temples and pagodas dating back to the 11th and 12th century. As you arrive in Bagan, you can choose between three main areas to stay. Niang O is the most busy place and has the best selection of budget accommodation, so most backpackers tend to stay here. Niang O also has an atmospheric road with a nice selection of restaurants, referred to as Restaurant Row. You will also find the Mani Situ market here, where the locals come to buy their daily supply of fresh fruit, vegetables and fish. Visiting the market is a nice alternative to long days of temple watching. You might even catch up on some local entertainment. The second place you can choose to stay is around Old Bagan. Old Bagan is the core of the Bagan archaeological zone and is centered inside and around the old city walls. You will find many of the top-end hotels in this area. The third and last area to stay is New Bagan. Although this place has a good selection of mid-range hotels, I would rather recommend one of the two other places for better atmosphere. As you start your tour of the temple area, one popular way to get around is on the back of a horse cart. Although sometimes a bit uncomfortable, it will give you a good view of the surroundings and a driver with local knowledge of the best sites. Or you can just hire a bicycle and head off on your own. The area has a comprehensive network of both paved and dirt roads, and with a good map, you should have no problem in finding that special place where you can be all to yourself and just suck in the incredible atmosphere. As you start your temple safari, there are of course a few must-see sites. One of them being the view from the top terrace of the Shwe Sandao Paya. This pagoda is Bagan's most famous sunset viewing spot and gives an amazing 360 degree view. It's very crowded here at sunset, but if you come here during the day, like I did, you're likely to be alone. As on many sites in the area, the stairs to the top are quite steep and should be climbed with caution. The main religious site in Bagan is the Shwe Sigon Paya. This impressive golden pagoda can be found just west of Nyang O. The Ananda temple just outside the walls of Old Bagan is known as the finest, largest, best preserved and most revered of all the Bagan temples. Inside you will find four nine and a half meter tall beautiful golden Buddha statues. In the Sulamani temple in the central plains of Bagan, you can find some of the area's finest temple paintings, some dating back to the 12th century. And next door, the massive Damayangi temple easily recognizable from any high ground view around Bagan. The Mahabuddhi Pagoda inside the walls of Old Bagan is modeled after the famous Mahabuddhi temple in Budgaya, India. The original temple being the place where Buddha attained enlightenment. If you need a break from the temple watching, you might want to cool off down by the river just 200 meters down from the Mahabuddhi Pagoda. Here you can also visit the golden stupa of Bhupaya, which is a popular destination for the locals. The Manuapaya is named after the king that was held captive here. Its three large sitting Buddhas and the reclining Buddha at the back all seem too large for their enclosures. 
supposedly representing the stress and discomfort the captured king had to endure. Inle Lake is the second largest lake in Myanmar and one of the highest at an altitude of 880 meters. It's famous for its stilt house villages and its lush floating gardens. To get to Inle you fly to Heho and take a one hour taxi ride to the city of Nyang Shui. The city itself doesn't really have a lot to offer but it has a decent selection of restaurants and hotels. A 10 minute walk from the city center will take you to the canal where you can hire a boat for a day on the lake. The boats are all the same and they will take up to 5 tourists at a time. A typical day on the lake will first take you out to watch the techniques of the local fishermen. Before you enter the more intimate channels that take you to the holiest religious site in the southern Shan state, the Pangdao Opaya. This Buddhist temple is a busy meeting place for locals and tourists, and especially so when it hosts the five-day rotating market. This market is held at different locations around the lake every weekday, and you should definitely check out where it's held before you head out on the lake. In the cozy and nicely structured village of In Pao Kon, you can see some of the famous stilt houses on Inle Lake. In the famous floating gardens of Inle Lake, local farmers grow flowers, fruit and vegetables on top of floating beds made from seaweed. The farmers use small boats to paddle up and down between the rows tending their crops. A trip on Inle Lake should include a visit to the village of Intain. An extra 20 minute boat ride up a narrow river from the lake will take you there. This cozy laid back village is busy when it hosts a 5 day rotating market but otherwise not. You will find several ruined stupas just behind the village, but the main attraction is on top of a hill reached by this covered stairway. The Shui In Tain temple itself is not the main attraction here, although interesting enough. But surrounding the temple is a cluster of more than 1000 small weather beaten stupas. Walking around here gives a very special atmosphere. The stupas date back to the 13th century, although most of them are built in the 17th and 18th centuries. And the restoration project has been started to restore them. On your tour of the lake you will be taken to several places where you can see how they make some of the local products, including the cigar manufacturer. In one of the weaveries, long neck women have been brought down from their villages to act as tourist magnets. In another one, they use thread from sugarcane as a base for their products. And you are of course welcome to purchase. You can also learn how they make the boat you have been traveling around in all day. The large ones goes for 2000 US dollars with an extra 1000 for the Chinese imported engine, while the small ones goes for 500 dollars. At the end of the day you will be taken to the famous Jumping Cat Monastery. This monastery has a nice collection of Buddha images, but is most famous for its jumping cats, having been trained to leap through hoops by the monks. Unfortunately there was no show during my visit. One of the attractions in the capital of Yangon is just to walk around the streets and take in the hustle and bustle of daily life. 
However, at one point, you must visit the most sacred of all Buddhist sites in Myanmar, the Shwedagon Paya. The Shwedagon is best entered from the main south gate, where a spectacular built-in path will take you up the hill to the pagoda. There is also the option of a lift. However, I will definitely recommend the main path, as it is an attraction in itself. The Golden Pagoda rises 98 meters above its base, and archaeologists suggest the original one was built by the Mon people between the 6th and 10th centuries. All around this mighty stupa, you will find an incredible assortment of smaller temples, shrines and images. There are a number of small pavilions where you can sit down, relax and read up on your guidebook. And make sure you stay until the sun goes down to enjoy the beauty and the special atmosphere at night. If you're not tired of temples and pagodas by now, you can visit the Buta Tong Paya down by the river. Inside this pagoda, there's a golden maze that will take you to the main attraction, which is an actual hair relic from the original Buddha himself. Behind the pagoda, there's a large pond with hundreds of terrapin turtles, as well as several large Buddha statues including this gilded bronze Buddha which was stolen by the British in 1886. It spent almost 70 years in the Victorian Albert Museum in London before it was returned to Myanmar in 1951. Before you leave Myanmar, you might want to visit the Bogyogi Aung San Market in downtown Yangon. This 70-year-old market has over 2,000 shops and a large selection of souvenirs and other Myanmar specialties. Before I leave you, I will show you very quickly where I stayed during my trip. On my first night in Yangon, I stayed at the Beautyland Hotel too. This is a very basic backpacker hotel with a certain charm, but with small rooms and somewhat uncomfortable beds. In Bagan, I stayed at the amazing Bagan Resort. This is a great hotel with nice and spacious rooms, and probably the best service I've experienced in any hotel in Asia. The breakfast is also very nice. At Inle Lake I stayed at the hotel Amazing Yang Shui. This is a sister hotel of the Amazing Ing Bagan. Also a very good hotel with nice comfortable rooms and a nice patio outside to relax in the evening. Breakfast also decent. On my last days in Yangon I stayed at the Tamada Hotel. Large but somewhat damp rooms. Breakfast is served in the restaurant next door.